I just want to show some rod bearings from an N55 motor that I'm tearing down. Um, looks like it's spun, looks like the number five rod. These are the bearings from the number five rod. It's very interesting. This just looks a little different from what I've seen in other engines. Uh, before we get to these bearings, I'm going to show you the other ones. Uh, this is two. This bearing and cap doesn't look too bad. Um, there's a gouge in the middle there. Might be some foreign crap that dragged through the middle of the bearing, but otherwise this bearing's pretty good. I don't know why. Every engine I've torn down, all the bearings have been discolored like this. Um, probably just from age, but again, this is number three. There's nothing in this bearing that you can feel. Catch a fingernail in. There's some streaks through it, like it uh, drags some dirt through this journal, but nothing crazy. Again, here's four. Four. Again, same thing. Doesn't look too bad. A few streaks in it. Um, then you get to number five. And I can only imagine what happened here. Um, probably detonation or knock but this bearing is just pounded you can see where the edges of the bearing have been pressed into the bevels in, on the crank there's little grooves on the edge of the crank for oil to escape out the edge and this bearing has just been pounded into that groove I mean it's fairly flat should not have this like scalloped look to it where it has lips on the edge like that it should be flat um, here's the number six bearing for comparison's sake you can see this one also looks like uh, it's got a lot of wear on the back side of the bearing dead center and this is the the cap side the the rod side uh, or the upper bearing usually takes more of a beating but you can see the, these lower bearings as I pull them out have a lot of wear dead center on the bottoms um, I don't know from knock or or um, what have you, but this was a JB4 car. I think the owner probably ran it on map seven on regular 93 octane. The car was probably knocking quite a bit. Not really sure honestly what happened here, but uh, I just wanted to make a video of this because these bearings look a little different than other failed bearings I've I've come across. Usually they're just shredded and destroyed. I mean these look like they spun, but. They're perfectly smooth. You know, this car didn't even didn't even really make noise until it got hot. It started to knock a little bit, but it was very subtle. Um, yeah, these bearings were spinning. Interesting. And the cap. Where's the cap? So I've already put a new bearing in this cap. Um, this cap has taken a lot of abuse. It's blackened from all the heat that it's taken from that spinning bearing. You know, it's not getting the proper oiling through here to keep it cool. You know, the oiling doesn't just provide a cushion. It also um, doesn't just lubricate the moving parts and keep them separated. It also carries away heat. So with the, with the absence of the oil, this rod took a lot of heat. I can I can would bet any amount of money that this cap is no longer round. Um, if I bolt this up, I'm sure this rod will be out of round. And the structural integrity of the rod is, is not there anymore. But... Um, this is one of the reasons why when you when you do have failed bearings, I mean, you know, your motor's pretty shot. You could tear it down, but I mean, this rod really should be replaced. Um, I've seen worse, but it is what it is. And com for comparison's sake, here's a regular regular cap. Here's the one that spun, and just I can just tell it's not round anymore just by looking at it, but. If I line up the caps perfectly, edge to edge, you can see that they don't match up anymore. You know, one is a little bit past the other. This one is more pinched inward. That's the, the good one. The bad one's like pinched inward and elongated in the center here. Um, if you compare two good ones, they, they pretty much line up perfectly from edge to edge. The little I'm talking about is just lining up there. You don't even need from there to there. I mean, they're pretty much squared. But the bad one, 
You line the bad one up with it. And you can see it's off by quite a bit. You know, if you can visually see that, it's gonna measure off. You know, we're talking oil clearances are in the thousands of an inch, you know, less than a human hair. Um, so if you can visually see the rod is, is not lining up, it's, it's out of round. But we will slap bearings into this and see how long it runs. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing now with the crank. Which actually looks miraculously good. So underneath the car now, I just want to show you what the journal looks like on, on cylinder number four. It actually doesn't look all that bad. Um, you know, again, I've seen a lot worse. There's actually nothing here that I could catch my finger on. So I'm going to try to clean it up some sandpaper and again we're just gonna see if we can get this engine to run again without needing to tear it down drop a new crank into it new rods um, we'll try to save this thing those might be stress cracks right there in the surface of the journal can't really tell but just for again for comparison's sake here's what the other this is what a good journal looks like this thing's you know perfect still there's nothing here um, fairly well polished still, no scratches in it or anything. The other journals all look good. Yeah. So, not too concerned. You can see the top of the, the rod looks pretty, like it's in pretty rough shape. Um, where that bearing was spinning inside the rod. But we'll measure some plastic gauge to see what kind of oil clearances we end up with after we finish polishing up this journal. Um, we'll use a nice big piece around the whole cap so that we make sure we're not at a round too much. You know, without being able to put a, a micrometer or, a, or bore gauge rather inside the rod cap, you know, normally you would measure within the bore of the rod cap, within the rod end, you would, you would stick a bore gauge in between and measure the clearance and then measure the, well you wouldn't measure the clearance there, you would measure the diameter of the, the rod bore and then the outside diameter of the crank with a micrometer and then deduce the difference. You, you deduce your oil clearance by subtracting the difference between the two. And uh, What I'm going to do is use plastic gauge just to make sure that when I do bolt this all back together with a new bearing and I've removed material from here and that rod does look out of round, that it's not too much. You know, the threshold is, is about a half a thousandth, maybe five, ten thousandth, I, th I think is uh, BMW's tolerance. Um, again, we're not building a race engine here, we're just gonna try to get this thing to run again. And I'm fairly confident it will, and it will for a long time. This engine will keep going for a long time once I repair this bearing. Um, again, this crank doesn't look bad at all. The crank itself isn't blackened like it took heat just that rod cap because it was being 